Who is familiar with this video? Still face experiments. Harvard University Child Development Unit looked at, they were actually looking for social skills in infants. But what they stumbled upon ended up for us, uh, people who work with, with couples, uh, godsend. Because I think culturally, we really buy into this idea that we're independent individuals um, in charge of our own emotions. Culturally, not biologically. We are not wired independent. And if you consider, compared to other animals, like any other species, how long do we end up bonded with our children? Until. <laughs> this is. This is how much of a bonding animal that we are. We are incredibly bonded. And I guess I want to see how that and act come together. And I'll, if you want to know more about the bonds, you would go to Sue Johnson. Who you heard of Dr. Sue Johnson? Love Sense, her latest one, highly recommended. What an awesome book. Um, Hold me tight if you have couples who you may not see again, get them to read that book. They might not see you. If they do this book together, the book has exercises, hold me tight. Um, very useful, we've actually got research that shows couples that read that book do better than couples that read another book. So, <laughs> Sue Johnson. And if you want to, like, um, Blokes not connect with John Gottman stuff because it's a tick kind of list um, of do this and we are great at just do this. Okay. <laughs> um, how does it integrate with that? So first, I would like us to have a look at our biological wiring. I show this to clients. I pre preface it by saying I'm going to show you a child because I can't show you experimental conditions on an adult. You know, at certain, so if you've been on this planet long enough, you've been hurt. You've been betrayed, abandoned. You have raw spots, areas that you guard. I can't show you what it's like to just have the biological body. I also preface it by saying this is very clear. Mom looks after the baby. The roles are very clear. Adults take turns and they miss each other. Importantly, this baby doesn't have language developed yet. She doesn't have what is a concrete operation, like three concrete operations. What that means, for so grown ups, our logic will get in the way of connection and bond. And a lot of the stuff that you will find that ACT does is get past the language. Say, for example, did you do the same like did you to do a warm up exercise? to get connection down past the logic and past the language. Now, and I will try to translate this to adults. They're working to coordinate their emotions and their intentions, what they want to do in the world. And that's really what the baby is used to. And then we ask the mother to not respond to the baby. The baby very quickly picks up on this, and then she uses all of her ability. And notice the very first thing the baby did was to withdraw. She went away, and she waits for mom to reconnect. You will see adults do that as well. And the way it's supposed to work, the other person goes, are you all right? And our bond is reestablished. This is what it's about. The thing is, notice how lame my language is around this. I mean, we, okay, so we have the survival response, right? Life or death. Very sexy language, very kind of catchy. Culturally, we love the whole jungle idea. The fetus, the strongest. That one didn't say it. Doesn't matter, we, keep, we, we, we like it. Our fear of death. We totally get fear of death. Need to survive. Afraid of dying. We get that culturally. Once you start talking about bonding, um, okay, so we're bonding animal. We, we, yes, we have the need birth. So first thing we do is we gaze for the face to imprint. People don't know this. So I'm afraid of dying if I need to survive. What am I afraid of if I need to bond? I don't know. 
we don't have a good language about this, abandonment, loneliness, rejection. No, not really. I don't have to be abandoned to freak out. And couples I see freak out. They're still in the same house. They're not abandoned, they're not rejected. But they freak out and their heart rates will go. We don't, we don't culturally, only in the last decade we started accepting that yes, we're one increases, we've got to do something about this. Schools are delivering education very different now to what it was like when I was going to school. And um, Sue Johnson is now accepted as a full fledged therapist, a researcher and leader of thought. In the past, people would walk out on her when she got on stage. She was not cool. So I don't have very good language to speak to you about this right now. Suffice it to say that fear of death. So I would die or risk my life to protect my bodies. And it's not necessary just to remain with my loved ones, but to say prevent a piece of information leaking out that would help, would, would have that bond come under, under a threat. I would die protecting that. In other words, this isn't just another thing. It's as powerful as our need to survive. And fear of death is as powerful. Sometimes the fear of um, threat to bonds is more powerful than our fear of death. We will panic just the normal survival kind of existential panic where the, that bond comes under a threat. So let's see what, how the baby copes, copes with us. So this is them synchronizing. I'm going to stop pausing it now. When adults bond, they brain activity will mirror each other. It's beautiful. We are wired to bond with each other. Mom stops responding, and the baby recognizes it straight away. She withdraws. Adults will do that too. She waits. She checks in with the mom. Did it work? No, it didn't work. She gets cute. And it didn't work. So she gets curious. Mom, look over there. Adults do both. We get cute. We go, look. Did you see the new gadget I bought? And notice it starts being distressing. And your grown ups, your adults won't know why. They'll just go, boom. Oh. She starts to misbehave. She's screaming. I don't know if you can hear this. And adults will start to misbehave. We can't contain it. And so adults misbehave in more costly ways. <laughs> Drunk and smash up high to hold. But she can no longer contain it. She falls apart. She can no longer be with this. Look at that face. This is real pain. Now with babies and longer in pain, life is great. <laughs> We don't do that. We <laughs> And we have a lot to learn from this, right? We go on hurting. I can't believe you did this to me. Why? Is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with you? Are you always going to keep doing this to me? Right? Adults, our logic gets in the way and we go on. I'm like, it's conscious, baby. In other words, I was hoping that where we start with this is that there's going to be pain. You're going to work with a couple, pain is going to show up. A lot of that pain is from disconnect. A lot of that pain will come from threat to their bonds. So what do we do to reconnect? Okay, let's meet John and Dave. John and Dave are on the verge of separation. Everything is an argument. John complains, she can't speak to Dave. He turns everything into, into a job. He says hurtful things, calls her names, and runs away from it. She believes, or Dave believes that they um, just have different values and different ways that they approach life. John is just more focused on the future. He's a lot more now. Bless you. Um, both have some history of hurt in their bringing. Both have um, some painful past relationships. And both have been treated for some mental health concerns individually. And they feel like they're housemates. They feel um, one of the things they said, oh, he high-fived me in the bedroom. 
I'm not sad about that. That's the most intimate we've been in months. <laughs> you see for a couple of seconds? So, what I'm going to invite you to do, and you're welcome to use this as a template. I, I wanted to provide you something. You're welcome to use your couples if you work with couples. Think of a couple that you start with the discussion. Work with within. So I'll invite you to break down to four groups. Within four groups, okay, this is a bit backwards. Within four groups, partner one and sorry, you're saying groups of four. Groups of four. What did I say? Four. Groups. Four groups. My apologies. Um, the fantastic fours. We'll break to fantastic fours. Partner. So those are two partners. Each will try to guess what it's like to be here. So I just want the partners to see what happens when the other partner makes a move. What does it feel like for you? And guess what it felt like for them? Same for the part for the other partner. Therapist will try to guess the partner's needs. What actually takes place? Where is that threat? When when does it show up? The observer. See as much as you can. Yes, as much as you can. Notice what happens. What is like to be a therapist in a room with two partners? Um, Sue Johnson herself said, um, when I work with an individual, it's a bit like sitting down for a coffee with a person. When I work with a family, it's a bit like having a family dinner. Working with couples, it's a bit like two cars trying to run you over the road. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have, a, have an experience. <laughs> You know, try, try to see what that's like and notice what it's like for the therapist in front of you. Imagine what their matrix is like and notice how what their magic matrix is like, what effect it has on the couple. Now, what you are trying to do here is, what's the purpose here? First and foremost, and as a clinician, you start there. What is this about? Why are we meeting? This is a Sunday. What are you doing here? <laughs> We want a better relationship. Whatever that means, it'd be good if you had actual words. We want to be more intimate. So we have to build the intimacy, changes the context of that pain immediately. That's the value. And what gets in the way? And now notice the function of my resentment it is no longer the first and foremost. It's what gets in my way of building a relationship. A better connection, being the man I want to be, the woman I want to be, the father I want to be, the, um, the mother. So how do we rebond? So I, I don't know if you're familiar with the four horsemen. Do you remember what the antidotes are to the attack the family? What's the uh, attack defend process? Um Gottman suggests What's your pain? What's your need? Really that Falls exactly under the matrix. You speak in terms of what are the private experiences that are painful. I'm, I'm pointing in an imaginary matrix, is that okay? Mm -hmm. probably be useful at that. What are the painful internal experiences that are getting in the way? What do you do to move away from those? What are the meaningful kind of Pursue that you're here for. So, for example, for example, we want more intimacy. And what can we do to take a step forward? Right? Does that make sense? Um, does anyone is anyone unclear about what I'm asking you to do? So, in terms of our work with clients, what I was hoping that you had a chance. To experience, your couples will come to you in sometimes a lot of pain. A lot of pain because they're struggling to connect. And they will have incredible fights. And you will ask, what was the fight about? And your couple will struggle to either remember or will both agree with something silly, something small. 
And you will find that a lot of conflict lives here. So outside, well, you said this, but you did that, but all I want you to do is this. So outside, well, you want to work on kind of warmer kind of approach. A lot of it is in here. I felt left alone, babe. <laughs> Now this is a soft, a compassionate, a, a, a warmer thing. And we can say the same thing. Look, I, I felt left alone. You can also say, look, you, you must have felt hurt. You felt hurt. I felt hurt. This is where a lot of rebonding happens when people have what Sue Johnson calls hold me tight conversations. And also we ask people to kind of take, to take a look at, well, what, what do you want here? What would you need? I've been hurt. What would I need? What do people say? So you've been hurt. Look, I'm really sorry. This must have sucked. What do you need? What a question. What would you need? I need him to change. <laughs> <laughs> and he is that a lot. <laughs> oh, her. Yes, him or her to change. Yeah. What would you need from me now? I'm really, really sorry. I can't believe I missed that you... What would you, I need a help. Just take me out on a day. Take out something that is about bonding. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff of what we need is, I need to know that you care. I need to know that you're there for me. And when I call, I need you. The response will be a resounding yes. That's what we need. What's the value here? Connection, we're here because we want to build intimacy. We're here because we want to have a stronger bond. People will come saying, we're here because we want to model a relationship to our kids so that when they have relationships, they know what a good, caring, loving bond looks like. Um, and a lot of the work you will do is a bit like, Pulling teeth. I mean, pulling. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What does it feel? And and what was it? What was it about for you? So the chip in the dish. Why did it hurt so bad? And then a lot more warmer, kinder responses come through. Sad rather than frustrated, resentful, and angry. Uh, and that's where bonding happens. Because that draws a sense of, oh my goodness, how many of I make you feel this way? That that draws us together. Where is the more defensive, frustrated? Well, who do you think put the food on the table? And this is in the outside world. And if you notice the person defending, they feel what? Okay. If you notice the person is defending, what do you, so outside you see defense. What do you know that happens inside? Fear. Absolutely, absolutely. They feel vulnerable. They afraid. They feel attacked. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's a tricky question I ask my couples, and that's a trick I ask permission from the start. I'm going to ask you a question which is a bit of a trap. What's the opposite of defense? The vast majority will fall into the trap and say attack. Attack is the best form of defense. What's the opposite of defense? That's the best form of defense. What's the opposite of defense? Submit. No defense, surrender. And it's really hard for couples to get that that is what they want to do, surrender. Choose your partner over being right. Mm. Choose your partner over defending. Mm. Open up to what shame, what pain, hurt, resentment may show up so that you can be the woman you want to be, so that you can be the man you want to be, so that you can have a relationship you want. Um, so this is this is briefly for relationships now. This was very brief. Can I get some feedback? What was it like to work with that in mind, kind of with that tool in mind, with the matrix? What was it like to work with the matrix 
on relationships. Yeah, what did you find? It gives you, gives you structure. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Okay, good. Love knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> I get really vulnerable when I'm without structure. Yeah, absolutely. It always reminds me to go deeper to that deeper um, level and not take the focus down to that level instead of letting that continue up here. Absolutely. If your schooling was anything like mine, you were trained problem solvers. You were trained to look at what factors need change and tailor a solution, administer it, evaluate and retail and continue with problem solvers. But you're absolutely right. It helps kind of go, well, what am I missing here? Why is so much pain? What's the real issue? What do you care about? Mm -hmm. And often if you can find pain, then you know that there is care. They are two sides of the same thing. And if I care, I'll hurt. I'll be vulnerable. Insecurity comes from I care. If I didn't care, there'd be no insecurity. If I care, and, and, and this, the more I care, the more insecure. It shows how hard it is actually. For me, it's always hard to get people to go to those steps or mm -hmm. um, to explore those steps. But it also shows <laughs> how easy it is to get back up to there because, mm -hmm. like you said, just give me a hug. Things are back to behaviours <laughs> again, or the person their desire could be. I want my husband to come home and tell me he loves me every day. That's just words. <laughs> We're sort of getting back up to the outward yeah. stuff again. We're not. By. <laughs> we are trained to focus on the outside. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, so I was going to say, um, um, continuing what Alex was saying, is that clients also come in very well practiced and very well rehearsed at the outside stuff. So they're looking for the solution. They're wanting to go out with something tangible. So I found that sometimes it's helpful to set the scene that we're going to maybe be doing the things that might look a little bit unusual in here, mm. and I might stop you and. We might go you know, a little bit deeper in the moment. Um, and, you know, there'll be a reason behind that. And you know, so trying to help them see that they're not just going to stay on that. You know, on the one hand this, on the other hand that, and this and that. And I'm going to be the judge who will tell oh, who's exactly. right. Exactly. Right? Absolutely, exactly. absolutely. And and you will see couples are great learners, and they have a beaten track. They've done something once, but it's an established pattern. By the time you see them. They're really good at doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And again and again, you'll see them whoosh, like slot right back into the beaten track. And I often kind of go, did you, did you notice? What just happened? Just right back. That's how good a learner we are. And what we, it's really confronting to learn a new thing, especially if it has to do with being outside of my comfort zone in front of a person who matters a great deal to me before whom I'm probably be the most vulnerable I can be. Mm -hmm. What intimacy really is. Mm -hmm. The most vulnerable I can possibly be unguarded. Mm -hmm. um, was, just another point. It was also interesting in our group when I was trying to work towards an action, it became maybe not real clear, but it became obvious that there were some issues around commitment to the relationship. And that's interesting in terms of the short time frame, how that revealed itself when by not being able to commit to an action. And things get in the way. Yeah, but it did make me wonder then if the person already um, disengaged from the relationship. And, and if you ask that person the kind of person they want to be, they would talk to you about faithful, dependable, reliable, they'd be there. But no one wants to be the guy who ran away or the girl who disengaged. What got in the way? Why? What's so scary? Things get in the way. Whatever that is. Why is it scary to commit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. what goes here? What gets in the way? Mm -hmm. Um. Any so any questions about couples and what we've just done with this exercise? 
I would like to have a bit of time, seven minutes to be exact, for any questions in terms of act. I was hoping that what we got here to do is what we've been doing. You come here to learn, you come here to get a skill to help your clients change. Did it, did it feel like what we've been doing here was a move toward that direction? Did it, does that, does it feel like what we're doing here is learning, is helping our clients change? Very good. This is our yellow brick road. This is for the whole day. I, I, I just want to go back. Well, I guess it's for the whole day and for just what we were doing with the couple. So even though I could intellectually understand what the, the paradigm was, that you have to really just go with what you got. And sometimes that's going to, um, as we were saying earlier, the whole thing goes out the door and you have to find Plans don't survive reality. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's true. <laughs> that's true. And with ACT, in terms of structure that it gives you, you have the three main things. Are you here right now? Mm. How present are you? Mm. Are you connected to what you're here to do? Mm. And are you open to experiencing stuff that is going to get in the way? Mm. And we take a step. <laughs> and then another. Then we get caught up. <gasps> Am I being a good therapist? Did they notice how insecure I am as a presenter? <laughs> right? And then we go, oh, look, I was distracted. I was in that world. Mm. Now does that feel like, not just your intent to let go and come back. Mm. To what? Back to the yellow brick road. To what we're here for. So this is in terms of plans not meeting reality. Absolutely. Can you maybe say a little bit about um, introducing um, the mindfulness uh, exercise say, with couples? Um, how would you introduce that? Would you introduce that with everyone that you see? Um, or not necessarily? Yeah. Um, a lot of the couples I see are military couples. So, couples present in different ways. And a lot of people, upon hearing the word mindfulness, will write me off. So no, I don't have a rigid structure. I will ask people what they want, and then will help them hold their hand, be there with them on the journey there. So this is important. So what's the next thing that you want to do? Okay, let's try it. How was that? Did that feel like a move towards? Okay, what's the next thing? No, that got in, got in the way. What got in the way? I don't, I'm not willing to have this shame. I know, it sucks. I hate shame. <laughs> so what can we do? Can we kind of work on opening up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more? doesn't have to be formal. Mm. Especially with couples, a lot of things don't have to be formal. But I will reinforce the light out of CRP2, or a move towards. Mm. And someone just, and couples won't do that. Uh, who said here, oh, Kim said catching bullets. So this is Sue's kind of um, expression. Because couples not used to talking about the inner stuff, We'll fire at the partner because the partner took the guard down. Oh, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> right? Catch that bullet and reinforce the light out of that move. That was that would have taken courage. To open up the way you just did, to just put yourself on hold and give your partner what they were after. Did that feel like you were building intimacy in that moment? Is that, did that feel like you took your guard down? How much courage would that have taken? So yeah, um, not necessarily formally, but informally again and again and again. And with individuals as well, not necessarily formally. 
some will not be ready and it might take 60 seconds. And in those 60 seconds, they won't close their eyes. And in those 60 seconds, there might not be silence. We might be still talking about something and they open. That's a point of this. I, I see that you're feeling this right now. You hate feeling this. And here you are letting me see this. It's a lie. My goodness. And let them feel it. Let, can we open enough room for it to be there? I mean, I typically squish when I don't want something to be there and then kind of drop your brace. Let's see if we can let it be there. How long for? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Act in general. When you have like brand new clients, do you kind of introduce like how you work? Like specific um, yeah, there is absolutely an informed consent. Yes, informed consent is very important to our work. How we do it is different. Some clients will disintegrate upon just the doors closed and they already in the midst of what was happening. Mm -hmm. Then others, you can actually have an academic discussion beforehand about limits of confidentiality. And yeah, it's. Informed consent is very important as soon as you can. Um, I won't necessarily do it in the way that I've done it here. Mm -hmm. I, I do compare myself to a trainee with a fancy toolbox. I take instruction from you. If this worked well, what would you see in your life? <laughs> I actually, I don't call it values from the start. I think the word values can scare people. I think the word acceptance commitment therapy can scare people as well. <laughs> scared me the first time I heard it. Mm. What are you asking me to help you do, is how I ask it. I don't get to barge into your life. I'm not arrogant enough to assume I know how to do your life better than you do. Mm. So I take instruction from you. What would you hope that I help you with? And how would you know that we've succeeded? Or would you see yourself as a dad more of something, or as a partner more of something, or as a worker, student? What have I missed that they give? Does that answer your question? Any other questions? Guys, thank you so much. It's a humbling experience to have a group of people be so kind to me and so engaged throughout the Sunday. I really appreciate it. You trusted me to come and stand before you, you put your Sunday on hold, your lives on hold, and you travel here. And I want to thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You Sorry, <laughs> If there are any further questions after this um, Brisbane Act Centre, we are a group of people who are passionate about this. We'll look at this in extraordinarily exciting, geeky ways. So ask us, and we will be glad to provide whatever info we have in the literature lists. Notice the authors. Anything these authors have written, I recommend wholeheartedly. So clinicians and clients, notice the authors in that literature. Those authors, I recommend. There are tons of materials vast majority of which have no foundation in science. Every author I've written has written in, found, in founding their stuff in science yeah. has been peer reviewed and worked. Thank you very much, Dick. Can I say, I have um, I've seen quite a few uh, of these events over the, over the couple of years now. And to go back to my old stats from uni, and if we know about the normal distribution, <laughs> I think Nick's an outlier, wouldn't you say? <laughs> He's right out there. And, you know, uh, so thank you so much for coming. What I really loved, do you know the, the, the exercise of writing something down, crumpling it up and giving it to I thought that was one of the most powerful exercises and introductions of a national experience. And we're sitting there with my, with my uh, co-conspirator as it were, and we're basically in tears, and we said nothing to each other. So that was truly uh, one that I'm going to uh, plagiarise you to death on, so that's, that's, I've, I've, I've stolen that now. So um, 
thank you so much, and um, we really appreciate it. And I think you'll be coming back hopefully sometime in the future. Okay. <laughs>